Pope Francis will ride the first Jeepney Pope Mobile during his visit to Manila next week. The Jeepney-inspired vehicle is all white. The sides are open to give the faithful a good view of the Pope. Glass crosses are seen on each side, while the papal coat of arms adorns the hood and the roof. The passenger compartment has three seats, the papal seat front and center, and two chairs for Archbishop Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle and Socrates Villegas. The vehicle is not bulletproof and will allow the Pope to be closer to the devotees. One week until Pope Francis touches down here in Manila, and Catholic believers are ripe with anticipation. Our chief correspondent, Pia Ontiveros, is now in Rome. She is among those chosen to journey with the Pope on his plane throughout his trip to Asia and back to the Vatican. St. Peter's Square glows on this chilly January morning, but I'm sure there's nothing in the Vatican that you haven't already seen, either with your own eyes or on television or in photographs. But for this first-timer here in the Vatican and on the papal flights to accompany Pope Francis, when he visits Sri Lanka and my home country, the Philippines, a wave of emotions, a sense of being a pilgrim has engulfed me, overwhelmed beyond that. Because covering the Pope is not just a story, it is a gift and a grace, not so much an opportunity as it is a blessing, not just a coverage, as it is a pilgrimage, as a Filipino, as a journalist, as a Catholic. Many of us were baptized Catholic, grew up Catholic, went to Catholic schools run by, say, Benedictine nuns and Jesuit priests, went to Sunday Mass, Mass on Holy Days of Obligation, Holy Week, Christmas, New Year. There are 13 of us Filipino journalists who will be on board the papal flights. From here in Rome, we fly with the Pope to Colombo on the 12th. Sri Lanka has a small Catholic population and brewing political trouble, but the Pope is still going, last we heard, and we fly with him to Manila on the 15th. In our lifetime, we've known five popes. Pope Paul VI, John Paul I, John Paul II, Benedict, and Francis. But Francis's visit is unique. We know that the Philippines is the biggest Catholic country in Asia, but Filipinos around the world are the reasons why parish churches are alive. John Allen Jr., a leading Vatican journalist, told me in an interview I did with him last year that Filipinos are the new Irish who help spread the gospel. Pope Francis will also bring his message of mercy and compassion and the underlying message of a simpler, renewed church. A church devoid of the trappings of this world World, a church that is like a field hospital in the middle of a battlefield, one that goes outside the sacristy. A church that, like the Good Shepherd, leaves the 99 sheep to look for the one that is lost and must be carried home. Where this journey takes this pilgrim, only God really knows. A journey that is almost like a prayer sent up to the heavens, like the prayers and songs one grew up with. Pananagutan, walang sinuman ang nabubuhay para sa sarili lamang. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, or in omnibus, amare et servire domino, in everything, love and serve the Lord. It is this message that Francis will bring with him as he journeys to the Philippines next week. He is as much a pilgrim as all of us on that flight, or all of you who wait for him.